the glorious, the powerful, the holy God, you are our God. We come to you this evening, O oh Lord. We come to you by the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the access we have to the throne of grace. We thank you because you give us the privilege, the opportunity to pray to you, and you hear and you answer prayer. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the privilege also to study your word and the guidance we receive from you by your spirit. We can never thank you enough. Please accept our thanksgiving, Lord. And this evening, please, touch every one of us. 
as we pray, as we study, Almighty God, let your grace flow from the throne of grace. And let every one of us be drenched with grace. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for today. And we are going to pray. We will pray to our prayer answering God before we go into the study of the Bible. And we begin with thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to the Most High God. Tell God, say, my Lord and my God, I thank you for the grace to be alive. My Lord and my God, I thank you for the grace to be alive. Because only those who keep alive can live. I know you are the one keeping me alive. Oh God, I thank you for the grace to be alive. My Lord and my God, I thank you for the life that is in me. It's from you. Thank you for the grace to be alive. Thank you, oh Lord, my God, for the grace to be alive. In Jesus Christ's name we give thanks. Amen. Let us still thank the Almighty God. Tell God, say, my Lord and my God, I thank you for the gifts of work, of employment, the gift of play, and the gift of sleep. Thank you for these gifts, O oh Lord. Work or employment or career or business or trade, whatever we do for a living is a gift from God. Thank you for the gift of work. And when we relax to play, it is a gift from God. Thank you for the gift of play. And when we go to bed at night, as it is ordained by God, and we're able to sleep, it is a gift. Father, thank you for the gift of sleep. Thank you for these three gifts of work, play, and sleep, oh God. In Jesus Christ's name, we give thanks. Amen. Let's give thanks to God. Tell God. Say, my Lord and my God, I thank you for the gifts of relatives, of friends, and of neighbors. Thank you for relatives, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, uncles, nephews. Thank you for the gift of relatives. And thank you for the gift of friends also, friends, colleagues, acquaintances, and thank you for the gift of neighbors. And one is not living alone, isolated, maroon on, on one island somewhere. We are living in the midst of people. Thank you, my Lord and my God, for the gift of relatives, friends, and neighbors. In Jesus Christ's name we give thanks. Amen. Finally, let us thank God. Say, my Lord and my God, I thank you for the gift of hope. Thank you for the gift of hope, the hope of a better future, the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Thank you, oh Lord my God, for the gift of hope. This hope is very important. That's what we are living for. Without hope, there is no reason to be alive. Thank you, my Lord and my God, for the gift of hope, the hope of a better tomorrow, and the hope, above all, of eternal life, being between your kingdom forever. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we give thanks. Amen. We're going to pray. Tell God, so Lord my God, please show me mercy and abort every evil, any evil that have been planned 
or determined against me, whether it is now or in the near future or in the distant future, whether it is in the spirit realm or in the physical realm, oh Lord my God, I pray, please show me mercy. I bought and completely cancel any evil that have been planned or determined against me. Any evil that have been planned or determined against any of my loved ones. My Lord, my God, please have mercy on me. Show me mercy. I bought any such plan. I bought, I bought every such plan. Whatever it is that have been determined, that have been planned against me, against any of my loved ones. My Lord, my God, please show me mercy. I bought it and cancel it completely. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, please show me mercy. I bought and cancel any evil that have been planned or that have been determined against me or against any of my loved ones. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Tell God, say, my Lord and my God, please show me mercy. Replace the evil with good. Every evil that you have bought, that you have aborted, that you have canceled, replace them with good things for me, O oh Lord. For me, for my loved ones, replace the evils with good things. O oh Lord, release divine goodies. Replace all the aborted and the cancelled evils with divine goodies from the throne of grace. Divine goodies to my life, to the lives of my loved ones. Release divine goodies, O oh God. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I say, pray, tell God. Say, oh Lord, my God, please show me mercy and let the heavens of your favors open upon my life. Ah, my Lord, my God, I beg, please show me mercy and let the heavens of your favors open upon my life, open upon my domain, open upon my territory. Open upon me, upon my family, upon my household, upon my loved ones. Please show me mercy. Oh Lord, my God, show me mercy. Let the heavens of your favors open. Upon me, upon my family, upon my household, upon my loved ones. Please let the heavens of your favors open upon us. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Let's pray this one. Say, oh Lord my God, please, send mercy drops followed by showers of blessing upon me in the name of your son Jesus Christ. Send mercy drops, oh God. Let's, let mercy drops from you fall upon me, fall around me. And let them be followed by showers of blessing. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, my God, please. Send mercy drops. Followed by showers of blessing. Upon me. Upon my family. Upon my household. Upon my loved ones. Send mercy drops. Followed by showers of blessing. To soak my domain. To drench my entire territory in the name of your son Jesus Christ. Oh Lord my God. Please do this for me. Send mercy drops, followed by showers of blessing upon me, upon my family, upon my household. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Let's pray this one to tell God. Say, Oh Lord my God. Please show me mercy. Let your presence be strong in and around my life for my good. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord my God, please show me mercy. Show me mercy, oh Lord. 
And let your presence be strong. I beg for your gracious and your glorious presence to be strong in and around my life. In and around my home, my family, my household. Let your gracious, your glorious, your powerful presence be strong. O oh Lord, in and around my life, in and around my home, my family, my household, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, my Lord, my God, I pray, please show me mercy. Show me mercy, Almighty God, show me mercy. Let your gracious and your glorious and your powerful presence be strong in and around my life, in and around my home and my household, in and around my family. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Let's pray this one. Tell God. Say, oh Lord, my God. According to Psalm 106, verse 8. Oh Lord, my God. According to Psalm 106, verse 8. Please save me for your name's sake. And make your mighty power known in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord my God, you are the God of heaven and earth. You are the only true and the living God. According to Psalm 106, Psalm 106 verse 8, please save me for your name's sake and make your mighty power known in my life. Save me for your name's sake. In my family, in my household, O oh Lord, please save us for your name's sake. Rescue us from every adversity. Save us for your name's sake, O oh God. And make your mighty power known in our lives. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, my God, according to Psalm 106, verse 8, please show us mercy. Save us for your name's sake. And make your mighty power known in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Finally, let's pray to God. Tell God. Tell him heartily. Please mean it. If you don't mean it, don't bother to pray. Say, oh Lord my God, I am determined to live my life to please you well. Please, pour your grace into my life abundantly every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, I beg you, my God, Pour your abundant grace into my life every day without season. To enable me to please you, to please you well as I have determined. It is my decision and my determination, oh Lord my God, to live my life to please you well. Therefore, Lord, please pour your grace, abundant grace into my life every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, pour your grace in abundance. Lord God Almighty, my Heavenly Father, pour your grace in abundance into my life every day. I am determined to live my life, to please you well. Please, release abundant grace into my life to make it so. Thank you, gracious God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Almighty, gracious and prayer answering God. We thank you because by your grace we have given voice to our request. And we know you've heard us. Oh Lord, we are so grateful. Because we have prayed in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, O oh Lord. As we proceed into the tour of the Holy Bible, Gracious God, the God of the word, please open the pages of the Bible to us. Lord, by your spirit, let us see the sacredness of your word. Let us see the, the, the verity of your word. Let us see the power of your word. Let us see the sanctity of your word. Let your word do us good. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Praise God.
Last week, in chapter 31 of the book of Second Chronicles, we saw how the people moved massively to destroy every foreign god, all the foreign gods in the land of Judah, even beyond Judah. They destroy, we saw the destruction of all the pagan altars, all the sacred pillars, all the wooden images, and the high places of pagan worship in Jerusalem, in all the cities of Judah, in Manasseh, in Ephraim, and in Benjamin. We also saw King Hezekiah in action. He revived re-established and revitalized the service of the temple of God and the worship of God. He organized the priests and the Levites according to their divisions for the service. I mean the temple service as laid down at the word of God given through Moses. For the priests and the Levites to be devoted, fully devoted to the service of God and the temple, Ezekiah reinstated the practice of tithing and the command, as commanded by God as a means of meeting the needs of the priests and the Levites who are supposed to work full time in the house of God. They were not supposed to do any secular work. And the king, I mean Ezekiah himself, gave generously from his own possession his own personal possession. He gave to the service of God and the service of the temple. The people also responded and they contributed abundantly. Yes. And in all, we are told that Ezekiah did what was good, what was right, what was true in the sight of God. He sought and served God. The Lord is God with all his heart. And God, in turn, prospered him. May the Almighty God give all the grace to seek him with all our heart and to serve him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today, we make progress by the grace of God who has given us life. So the talk of the Holy Bible will take us through chapter 32 of Second Chronicles today. Second Chronicles chapter 32. Here we have 33 verses. In this chapter 32, I can tell us all from, it's a chapter of trouble. It's a chapter of problem. A chapter of challenge. You know, trouble, problem, challenge for the godly King Ezekiah. Well, it is also the chapter of divine intervention in Ezekiah's favor. Because King Zenacherib of Assyria brought war to Judah. And by, and by implication to Ezekiah the king. But Zenacherib was defeated without any war. Let the tour progress now. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, starting from verse 1. I read verse 1. After these deeds of faithfulness, Zenacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them over to himself. Full stop. Terrible. Then Akarim, king of Assyria, that was the period, the time of the Assyrian dominance in all the known world then. So then Akarim came. Of course, he had fought and conquered many nations, subdued and subjugated them. I guess he thought it was Judah's turn. So he came. That he entered, that means he invaded Judah and laid siege to the fortified cities. 
He wanted to take Judah completely, to win it over to himself. And look at the way the, that, that verse started. After these deeds of faithfulness, that is, after King Ezekiah's deeds of faithfulness that we have been reading, Generally, in this chapter 30, in chapter 31 that we just left, don't forget chapter 30 also. The man had done wonderfully well in the service of God and of his nation. It was after these deeds of faithfulness that the enemy came. Let's read verse 2. And when Ezekiah saw that Zenacherib had come, and that his purpose was to make war against Jerusalem. Let's just pause there. Ezekiah read through and he saw through Zenacherib's intention and him. He knew that having invaded Judah, having led sieges against the cities, the fortified cities, he knew that he was going to come to Jerusalem also. And let's see what happened. Verse 3. He consulted with his leaders and commanders to stop the water from the springs which were outside the city. And they helped him. Let's read on. Thus, many people gathered together who stopped all the springs and the brook that ran through the land, saying, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Full stop. Praise God. That was a war strategy. Ezekiah knew that the Nakarib was going to come to attack Jerusalem also, having invaded Judah. So he consulted with his officials. And the military commanders. And they decided that, okay, there was plenty of water around Jerusalem, the springs that provided, that supplied natural water. And if Zenakarib and his army will come and find those water, it will sustain them because that means they could lay siege against Jerusalem and have plenty of water to drink. Water was a very essential commodity in those areas. So they knew what to do. They said, okay, let's cut off the springs. That's what Ezekiah did. It was a huge task, massive labor. But the people cooperated with him. So you wouldn't see the waters on the surface because they now dug tunnels that inside of the water flowing on the surface and supplying everybody even outside the city of Jerusalem, the water will now flow through underground tunnels and supply the people inside the city. So that even if there was a long siege, people will have water to drink always. It was a huge task, but it succeeded. It was helped. May God help you, may God help me. In all that we lay our hands upon for good, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's see verses 5 to 8 now. And he stretched himself, built up all the wall that was broken, raised it up to the towers, and built another wall outside. Also, he repaired the mill in the city of David, and made weapons and shields in abundance. Then he set military captains over the people, gathered them together to him in the open square of the city gate, and gave them encouragement, saying, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that he is with him. For there are more with us than with him. With him is the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us 
and to fight our battles. And the people were strengthened by the words of Ezekiah, king of Judah. Full stop. Words can strengthen. And words can weaken. Thank God for Ezekiah. He had the wisdom. The knowledge, the wisdom. He knew God. God knew him. Multitudes came against Judah. Came against him. But he told the people that they were just mere hands of flesh. It does not matter the multitude of problems that come assailing us. Our attitude is what will matter ultimately. Our attitude as believers will defeat the multitudes of problems and troubles and enemies. All will because God is faithful. So Ezekiah strengthened his defenses, repaired the broken walls, reinforced them further, manufactured more weapons and shields, appointed military officers over the people, and then he inspired, he motivated, he strengthened them with encouraging words. He put faith into them. He said, don't depend, don't be afraid because of what you see. Be confident because of the God you cannot see. The invisible God is with us. Praise God. We're going to read now from verse 9. And then we'll stop at verse 19. After this, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent his servants to Jerusalem. But he and all the forces with him led the siege against Laches to Ezekiah king of Judah and to all Judah who are in Jerusalem saying thus says Sennacherib king of Assyria in what do you trust that you remain under siege in Jerusalem does not Ezekiah persuade you to give yourselves over to die by famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria. Has not the same Ezekiah taken away his high places and his altars and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, You shall worship before one altar and burn incense on it? Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of other lands who are the gods of the nations of those lands in any way able to deliver their lands out of my hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people from my hand? That your God should be able to deliver you from my hand. Now, therefore, do not let Ezekiah deceive you or persuade you like this. And do not believe him. For no God of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people from my hand or the hand of of my fathers, how much less will your God deliver you from my hand? Furthermore, his servant spoke against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. He also wrote letters to revile the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations, of all the lands have not delivered their people from my hand, so the God of Ezekiah will not deliver his people from my hand. Then they called out 
with a loud voice in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to frighten them and trouble them that they might take the city. And they spoke against the God of Jerusalem as against the gods of the people of the earth. The work of men's hands, full stop. Yes. That was an Akeri. He sent irreverent, boastful, and reckless words to Ezekiah and the people of Judah. He even wrote letters. He spoke against the Lord God of Israel. Because he was totally ignorant. He didn't know the difference between the God of Israel and the gods of the nation. In his crass ignorance, I mean crass ignorance, he compared and equated the Almighty God, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, with the worthless idols, the lifeless gods of the foreign nations, the pagan nations. Let us see what follows. Let us see verse 20 now. Now, because of this, King Ezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried out to heaven. We should pause there. They prayed, they cried out to heaven where God is. They prayed. Prayer is an exercise of faith. They prayed to an invisible God, the invisible God, the only true and the living God. You know, people be looking for wooden images, uh, golden images, whatever, because people want what they can see. So people People worship the gods of their own making. But we are to worship the God our maker and to cry to him. He remains invisible. He has chosen to be invisible. And we should accept him as such and worship him as such. So King Ezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, they cried out to the immortal, the invisible, the only wise God. Prayer is always an exercise of faith. And when we pray, let us please pray in faith. Pray to God. Let us see what follows. In verse 21. Verse 21. Then the Lord sent an angel. An angel. Who cut down every mighty man of valor. Leader and captain. In the camp. Of the king of Assyria. So. He returned. Shamefest, he returned shamefest to his own land. And when he had gone into the temple of his God, some of his own offspring struck him down with the sword there. Full stop. <laughs> Wonderful God. Praise God. Ezekiah the king, Isaiah the prophet, they cried to God in verse 20. In verse 21, God answered their prayers. May the almighty God whom we seek answer our own prayers. May God intervene in our situations. May this God that the Bible tells us in Psalm 46 is our refuge and strength, very present help in trouble. May he arise to help us in the name of Jesus Christ. God answered the prayers. He sent not many angels, not a legion, only one angel. That one angel destroyed the Assyrian army with all his commanders and officers. Wonderful. You can read the parallel account in 2 Kings chapter 20, please. You see there. Because I think that one angel killed about 185,000 Assyrians, Assyrian soldiers. One angel. Don't joke with God. 
So Zenakeri returned home in shame. He returned home disgraced. May God fight our battles. And may the forces who rise against us, whether in the spiritual realm or the physical realm, may the forces who rise against us be put to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. Back home, as Zedekiah entered the temple of his God, some of his own sons killed him with the sword. You know, it's not an Israeli soldier, it's not a Jewish soldier that killed him. It was his own son, one of his own sons that killed him in his own land. He brought war, but God killed him without a war. Praise God. It's good to rely upon God, to trust in God, so that he can take over our battles and fight for us at all times. Let's read on. Let's see verse 22 now. Thus the Lord saved Ezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Zanakarim, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side, full stop. May you have this testimony. It can be from headache. It can be from cancer. It can be from any form of sickness or this, any attack on our bodies. It can be from hypertension or diabetes. God can save from any adversity. It can be from financial distress. From anything that is adverse, that is bad. God can save us. May it be said of you that the Lord God Almighty saved you. May it be said of me that the Almighty God saved me. In the name of Jesus Christ. God saves. God rescues. You know, wonderful God. All the threat of Zenakarim came to nothing. All his boasting. Again, Judah. Let's see verse 23 now. Let us see verse 23. And many brought gifts to the Lord at Jerusalem and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations thereafter. Hmm. There's a way God will help somebody and people will know and people will be saying, ah, this is serious. People will begin to respect that person. God helped King Ezekiah miraculously. God helped Judah. From then on, King Ezekiah became highly respected among the surrounding nations. They even brought many gifts to God at Jerusalem. The God who could walk like that, who sent one angel to destroy a whole army and sent the king back home to be killed by his own children. They brought many gifts to God at Jerusalem and gave valuable presents to King Ezekiah himself. May the Almighty God be glorified in our lives. May God do wonders in our lives and we attract praises and glory to his name in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us see verses 24 to 26. In those days, Ezekiah was sick and near death and he prayed to the Lord and he spoke to him and gave him his son. But Ezekiah did not repay according to the favor shown him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore wrath was looming over him and over Judah and Jerusalem. Then Ezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon them in the days of Ezekiah. Let's take it. Step by step. Ezekiah was sick. He fell sick. 
and nearly died. But he cried to God. He prayed. He didn't ask anybody to pray for him. He prayed. You can pray. I can pray. Every child of God, everyone who is in relationship with the Almighty God can access God. I'm not saying we shouldn't seek help for one another. We can join hands to pray for one another. If you feel weak, you can call a brother, you can call a sister, you can call anybody to join you to pray. But what I'm saying is, every person, every child of God has an access, unlimited access to God at the throne of grace. Hezekiah cried to God, he prayed to God. It's not because he was king. It's because he knew God and God knew him. He prayed to God, God heard him, God healed him miraculously. You can read the detailed account in 2 Kings chapter 20 and in Isaiah chapter 38, please. God healed him miraculously. God saved him, rescued him from death. May you pray to God, may I pray to God, and may God answer us. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so, we are told in verse 25, after that, that Ezekiah became proud. God healed him miraculously. God was gracious. God was merciful to him. Maybe he, 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 he forgot so soon. You know, there's, there's an adage in Africa, by the Yoruba people, that when a favor done to somebody has become has been long, that person will forget. The recipient of that favor will forget. And they call that person a, a madman. He's a madman who forgets a favor done to him after some time. You don't ever forget. It's an ingrate who will forget. It doesn't matter how small, how little the favor is. Don't forget. So that tribe in Africa, they say he's a mad person who soon forgets a favor done to him. Ezekiah became proud. And the wrath of God hung on him, loomed over him and over Judah. But the good thing in verse 26 was that he repented. There's nobody who is too high to repent, to humble himself before the Almighty, the Most High. How high can a person be that he won't humble himself before the Most High God? King Ezekiah humbled himself, he repented. For it to be recorded, it must have been seen in him that this man really repented, really humbled himself. And the people of Judah also humbled themselves so that the anger of God was averted. God postponed it. He did not come against them in the lifetime of King Hezekiah. Let's make progress. Let's read verses 27, 28, and 29 now. Ezekiah had very great riches and honor. Riches are good, but without honor. It becomes a poison. So let me take it again, verse 27. Ezekiah had very great riches and honor. And he made himself treasuries for silver, for gold, for precious stones, for spices, for shields, and for all kinds of desirable items, storehouses for the harvest of grain, wine, and oil, and stalls for all kinds of livestock, and folds for flocks. Moreover, he provided cities for himself, and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him very much property. Full stop. Let's stop there a bit. Ezekiah was very wealthy and highly esteemed. So much that he had, he had to build special treasury houses for his gold, for his silver, 
and all the precious things that he acquired, even for his shields and other valuable items. He even had to construct storehouses for his grain, for his wine, for his oil. Further still, he made stalls for his cattle, folds for his flock and sheep and goats. Indeed, God prospered in Gezekiah. May God prosper you. So depend upon God. May God prosper me. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Almighty God visit every one of us graciously. And give us abundance of every good thing. In the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Let's see verse 13 now. This same Ezekiah also stopped the water outlet of Upper Gion and brought the water by tunnel to the west side of the city of David. Ezekiah prospered in all his works. Ezekiah prospered in all his works. We mentioned this aspect of stopping water and tunneling it earlier in this chapter. You could see that from verse 3 to 4, 5. See it there. So the water he denied the enemy who are the attackers from outside was channeled inside to the city. He dug deep tunnels underground to bring the water into the city, away from the open spaces. It was great wisdom then. It was like an invention in those days and we are told that he prospered in all his world every one of us seeking God may he please God to grant us prosperity may we prosper in all our works in the name of Jesus Christ verse 31 however regarding the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon whom they sent to him to inquire about the wonder that was done in the land. God withdrew from him in order to test him that he might know all that was in his heart. Mm. The best of men is still a man. As good as Ezekiah was, God came testing him. God does not tempt us with evil. But at times, God will step back and leave all to ourselves to see what we will do in certain situations. So ambassadors were sent from Babylon to pay a visit to Ezekiah. To greet him concerning his recovery and the wonderful things he did in his land. Try, go to 2 Kings chapter 20. Read it up to verse 12 and you will see then. What came out was that Ezekiel was, you know, he was ready to show off. Not to give all the glory 100% to God. And that's why God has left many places that we call churches today. God is not there. He just knows that he's there. Because what people call testimony time is denominational and personal marketing for the pastor, for the geos, and for the name of the church. Marketing, salesmanship, showmanship. That's what Ezekiah did. That's what we must not do. Ezekiah showed them everything that he achieved. Took, instead of telling them what God did. And so he took the glory for himself. And that was the problem. When you read it in the book of 2 Kings and the book of Isaiah, you will see God sent Prophet Isaiah to him and said, who are those who visited you? He said, oh, they came from Babylon. 
So what did you do? What did you say? I showed them all this and this and that. I showed them all his achievements. And by the word of the Lord, Prophet Isaiah told him that, look, a day is coming when those people, the Babylonians will come and they will carry away everything you showed them. And it happened. Because after the Assyrian dominance, the Babylonians came. The Assyrian Empire declined and died out. And the Babylonian Empire rose up in the known world then. And they came and invaded Judah, took away all that they saw. May God save us from ourselves. That's one major prayer we must be praying every day. Know that as a man, as a woman, the best of man is still a man. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to search us deep. Any vain glory, anything in us that is contrary to total godliness and holiness must be purged away. May God save us from ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ so that we will not be our own ruin. Let's round it up, verses 32 and 33. Now, the rest of the heart of Hezekiah and his goodness, indeed, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, and in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So Hezekiah rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the all part tombs of the sons of David, and all Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, honored him at his death. Then Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. Manasseh took over after Ezekiah died. Of course, as the way of all flesh, he died good enough, he had his son to take over. So Manasseh became king, the death of uh, Ezekiah. As we conclude, what are the vital lessons to learn? Number one, doing right and pleasing God are not a guarantee that we will not have trials, troubles, or challenges, that we even challenge our faith. No. Every one of us will encounter our own Zenakerib. Every one of us will encounter our own Assyrian invasion. But living right, trusting God, and pleasing Him are our necessary preparation for victory against the attackers. Pleasing God gives us the confidence that God is on our side and will intervene to help us when we call on him in prayer, because our God is a faithful God, faithful always. The Lord God showed up for King Hezekiah, and the enemy was disgraced, not just defeated, but disgraced. You have Psalm 34, verse 19 to refer to it says, Many are the afflictions of, not of the sinners, but of the righteous. So the righteous also can be afflicted. But the comfort there is that he said the Lord delivers him from them all. God will deliver us from every affliction in the name of Jesus Christ. When we seek God in our peace time, in our comfort, we can be sure that we'll find him a ready helper in our troubles. Zerachalim did not know the true God. That's second lesson. Zerachalim did not know the true God, the God of Israel. He just equated God, the Almighty God, with all other gods. But Hezekiah knew God, and he relied on him. And Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 says that those who do know their God will be strong, and they will do exploit. So Hezekiah was strong, and he did exploit. On the other hand, Zenacherib was humbled by God, defeated and disgraced. Praise God. The third lesson. Ezekiah fell sick. He nearly died. He prayed to God. God healed him. 
That is very important. When you pray, God will hear. Our God, God can heal. Either by medical science or miracle without any human intervention. That is God. He can choose any means he wants to use to heal us. Let us learn to pray to God always. To commit every situation to him and he will do as he pleases in his mercy. God is merciful. Now, lesson number four. Ezekiah became proud and he killed God's anger. <laughs> the anger of God hung over him. But you could see that he promptly repented. He humbled himself. You know, and we can never be too humble in the presence of our awesome and holy God. The king brought himself down, humbled himself. You know, and the genuinely humble person will always get God's listening ears. You want God to hear you, to listen to you, just humble yourself right from the heart, from inside. Number five, God prospered Ezekiah for his righteous deeds. And so number six, Ezekiah died and his son Manasseh reigned after him. What is the lesson there? Everyone, every person, whether good or bad, whether godly or ungodly, we die. The most important question is, what happens? What will happen after death? After that mysterious transition that is known as death, what will happen? Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 tells us, gives us a clue. It says, for it is appointed for every man to die once, and after that, judgment. So judgment is what follows. Lesson number seven. Remember what happened concerning the ambassadors who came to visit uh, Ezekiah. Let us avoid the show glass life, vain glory, struggling with God to share it, to share to share the glory with Him. Let let give God hundred percent of the glory, hundred percent. Don't take any bit of it for yourself. Finally, where are all those who have died? If you're asking that kind of question, I tell us it is too long a question to ask. Every person should ask himself or herself instead. Say, what judgment, what verdict awaits me after death? That is the question we should be asking. Am I doing all the good that I can do now? Or am I holding back? It can be very simple to hold back any good you can do. Because God did not hold back His only begotten Son. And the only Son of God, Jesus Christ, did not hold back His life. He did not hold back a drop of His blood. Everything was poured out for us at Calvary. We still have time now, even today. Because we have life by God's grace. So let us be wise. Let us arise now and begin to pursue the perfect will of God for our lives. No other thing will suffice. Only the perfect will of God. Let's pursue it. Let's do the will of God. Let us live to please God well. And it shall be well with us now and in all eternity. Let us pray. Tell God I should pour more of his grace into your life. I also will tell him, Lord, I need your grace in this end time. In these last days, I need your grace. Help me to please you all. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for another wonderful time in your presence. Time to open, to see, to read, to study, and to meditate on your word. Oh Lord, as we have done so today, please, by the water of your word, wash every one of us clean. Let no stain remain in our lives. In our hearts, anything that may be locked in there, 
beneath the surface, anything locking our heart that is contrary to your will, Father, let the blood of Jesus purge it away. Holy Spirit, rescue us from ourselves. Thank you, Holy God. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. If any man be in Christ, is a new creation. All things are passed away. The old, all things have become new. You can never be wrong. If you are under the influence of the patience of the Spirit, you can never be wrong. That's the truth. But you can be wrong if you are under the influence of fear. If you allow Jesus into your life, He will clean your life up. He will remove all the things that is not supposed to be there. But the prayer here, our desire is that every one of us will live a full life. Jesus lived for 33 years and He lived a long life because He's still alive today. God designed us for a particular work and that work is supposed to be to His glory. Luke chapter 12 verse 15, He said, Beware of covetousness. He said, The life of a man does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. The Psalm in Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Some side church is for those who are tired of religion. God himself hates religion. God wants relationships.